What's your minimum specification? In terms of the customer base, just get a sense here. What sort of verticals have been analyzing uh, Grayscale so far? Government, commercial, uh, data center, you know, recommendation engine type stuff? Yeah, I think there's another way to look at it. So there's, you know, the three big areas of AI today are like image processing, language processing, and recommendation, right? And then there's this kind of like movement from, you know, convolutional networks to transformer networks. Right, and everybody's using the same building blocks. And then what we've noticed is a lot of people go aim at the big hyperscalers, but they can't deploy you until you can sell them a million parts, right? And right. they don't want to buy a million parts until they see a proof point of 100,000, and you can't get there until you do 10,000. So we've, we've talked to a whole bunch of people, you know, top to bottom in the stack, and they're all interested. The ones that are easiest to talk to that are going to move the fastest are like AI startups or research labs inside big companies that own their own software and they they understand their models and do it. And, you know, our initial target isn't to get some huge contract, it's to get a hundred programmers using our hardware, programming it and, you know, living with it every day. Like, like that's where I want to get to in the short run. And that's, that's basically our initial plan. But <clears throat> they're fairly diverse people we're talking to, you know, there's autonomous, you know, control system kind of people, there's image people, there's language people. Uh, there, we were building this cool recommendation engine, which has an extra board in the computer with a huge amount of memory to make that model work. Um, so it's fairly diverse, but we're looking for people who are agile as opposed to a particular vertical. So, I mean, uh, go, going from, they say, 1,000 units to 10,000, 100,000 to the million, um, you obviously need an architecture that scales all the way through from yeah. you know edge to cloud uh, as, as i think uh, you know labisha said earlier is this what you mean by when you say tens torrent is the most promising architecture out there i mean i want to get on to you know the next generation wormhole design which is what i think yeah. you're talking about specifically when you mean that but can you can you go into a little bit more detail no i i would start with so like we have a compiler stack that says take Py PyTorch generates a graph and then the graph gets paralyzed into smaller chunks. And then those chunks have to coordinate between their computation and then they execute kernels, All right? That's the basic flow everybody's doing. We have a really nice hardware abstraction layer between the hardware and software to make that work that I really like. And let's just think about, so people say, I'm making this really big matrix multiplier. The problem with that is the bigger it gets, the less power efficient it gets because you have to move data far farther, right? So you don't want the engine to be too big. You want it to be small enough to be efficient, but you want it to be too small because then the chunk of data it's working on isn't that interesting. So we picked a pretty good size of the, what we call the Tensic processor. The processor is pretty pr programmable. It's really good at doing computation locally in memory and then forwarding the data from compute engine to compute engine in a way that's not software disastrous. And, and I've seen people say, oh, we just have this DMA engine and it's a program and, you know, you write all this code and, you know, and these guys just end up spending their whole life debugging corner cases. So we have a really nice abstraction in the hardware that says, do compute when you need to send data, put the data in the pipe, you push it in the pipe, the other end pulls it out of the pipe. It's very clean, right? And that's resulted in a fairly small software team and software you can actually understand. So when I say it's promising, it's because they picked, got a whole bunch of things right. The compute engine's the right size. It actually natively does matrix multiplying convolution. Those aren't programs for threads, right? It natively knows how to communicate data around. It's very good at keeping all the data on chip. So we're much more efficient on memory. We don't need HBM to go fast. So there's a whole bunch of things that do that. And then when we hook up multiple chips, the communication on chip and the communication chip to chip isn't different at the software layer, right? Physical transport's different, the on chip knock versus the ethernet pipe. But the hardware is built, so it's just sending data from this engine to this engine. And the software doesn't care, except for the fact that the compiler knows the latency and bandwidth here is a little different. But again, the abstraction layers are built properly. 
So you don't have to have three different software stacks. If you write on a, a GPU, you have to be a CUDA programmer and a thread, and then you have to coordinate the SM. And then on the chip, you have to do coordination. And then you have NVLink, which is a different thing. And then you have network, which is a different thing. And there's, there's many okay. different software layers. And if you have a thousand people and that's what you think is fun, that's cool. But if you just want to write AI programming, you don't want to know about, you know, all those different layers. Like, like we, we have a plan that actually will work. And then we're doing some other interesting things with, we're adding general purpose compute as part of the graph and future products. And we're, we're, we're looking at like, how do we make this really programmer friendly? What do the programmers want to yeah. do? And then, you know, how do we go meet them? Like hardware guys are, you know, like I've done a lot of projects where you build the hardware and then software guys are like, that's not what I wanted. So we're trying to meet the software guys where they're at and they want to write code. They, and they want understand the, the hardware so they can drive it, but they don't want to be tortured by it. <laughs>